we have some kind of composer inside your module, correct? Yes. And the entry point is like make my list view controller. And maybe this returns a UI view controller, right? With the composition. Is something like this? Yeah, we, we, we can assume it. Yeah, can assume yeah, it. Okay. Like, yeah. And you say that you need to pass a type name and then two loaders? The event list loader and a cache? Yes. Uh, the the cache the bus load is for remote and cache. This cache, something like this. Okay. And you mentioned that the URL is a detail, and are you also passing a URL? Yeah, or, I need the URL here. Or you create the URL inside the composer. Uh, I need to. Uh, uh, I need to create the URL and add components to the URL, like query parameters to to add the uh, event name uh, and uh, page number, uh, if, I, if, I, if I will support uh, the pagination, and this is the case here. So all of these details I need to inject in the composer of another module. So you got my point? Yes. So the question is, if I, if it's OK to pass a URL or all the details it needs to create a URL into the composer that is inside the feature module? Yes. Right. Ideally, the URL creation should be around in the application as well. At least the base URL should be defined in here. Because then, when you start in the application, or different applications can have different URLs, talking to different CDNs, different backends. You could also be deciding if it's an application with a, a debug configuration, a development, staging, production URL. So this will have to be decided at the application layer, like the actual environment. Environment details like URL, base URLs are defined, API keys are defined in the application module because these modules here ideally should be able to work with any configuration, but it shouldn't decide which configuration it's running, right? So usually you want, it's best practice to have environment details in the application layer, in the application module. You mean by application layer, the composition? The composition layer? Yeah, the, the actual application module, where right? you have frameworks. For example, we have your frameworks here. Those frameworks are not applications. They are reusable code across applications. And eventually, you will have an application module, right, which contains the composition for that specific application. And the URLs, the environment details, the API keys, they are defined in the application. And you inject those details into your modules. Thus, you can reuse those modules with different configurations for each application. Okay, so I I have uh, just recap for what what you already said. I have this URL, this base URL in the application uh, in the application layer. Uh, let let's say it's in in, in seam uh, in seam delegate, okay, or or any constant class that contains the base URL. So uh, in the composition, I, I I still need the query parameters. To, and and the constant URL in the okay. compos in the composer of th this uh, feature, the, the another feature which is listing. So let's imagine we are passing here a base URL, which will contain the environment details, right? The question is, let's say we have this this function there. Make list and here you pass the type name, uh, URL, no, string, and then you pass the base URL. Now, inside of this method here, you still need you need to create the actual URL that you make the, the call, right? There'll be like base URL dot appending the path component, and maybe it's like uh, and filter equals type name. So you need to know this, this uh, path component here, for example, adding this filter here, 
is leaking implementation details of an API, right? Each API may have different uh, query parameters. One may call it filter, one may be a path, filter slash type name. So this is infrastructure detail, right? Communication with the backend. And you are asking if how to hide this from the module? From a different module that doesn't care with these details even because this is not not a dependency for for this module because it can it can it can uh, uh, compile without uh, the need of this uh, filtering stuff. Yes. Otherwise, if you change the backend, <laughs> you need to change the the module here. The module. So if you want to decouple your module from the backend specific details, you can either pass already the final URL. You can pass the type name. You will construct the URL. Here, the adapter knows the event type. So the adapter has enough information to create the URL for you. And it's already in the application module. They have, they have access to the environment details, right? So you can create the URL. And here, you just pass the URL, the fully loaded URL. This is one option. And you're still not coupling these two modules. And you're now, you can pass any URL here. As long as it returns what you're expecting, that should be fine, right? OK, so uh, so I, I have to construct this URL in application module, let's say in scene delegate, OK? If you want to so hide this... it from your module, yes. OK. If you want to so... hide API details from your module, yes. Okay, that's uh, that makes sense. But here I, I'm still need uh, the event name. So I I first download and, and load the, the event types, okay. And based on the selection, the selection is uh, 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 I got it from a listing event. Yes. Here. A new feature, a, a, a different a different module, okay. So to construct this URL in the application layer, I need this event type name. Yeah, you got it here. To... The adapter is listening to the callback of the event type selection, right? Every time there's a selection, the event types list UI, which is this one here, right? Every time there's a selection here, there'll be a callback. The adapter is listening to the callback. And based on this, the, the callback, it will start co constructing this URL with uh, this Yeah, because here you have all the details. You have the event type. And the event type has an ID, has a name, has all the properties of the event type. All the information you should need to create the URL. That makes and sense. Then, because the URL is already an abstraction provided by the foundation framework, right? So you can pass here the URL to this module. This is one solution. Now, the other solution is this event list loader can be just an abstraction as well, right? Just like the cache. So here, you don't need to pass a URL because look at this. You have the loader and cache as requirements that someone else needs to implement. That's what a protocol is. It's a bag of functions that someone else needs to implement, right? Now, you can have another module, like you can have an infrastructure module. Infrastructure module with the implementation of all the requirements. Yeah. So you will implement the cache. Like a core data. Oh, it doesn't need to be one infrastructure module. You can have more than one. You can have one for the network, one for the cache, and so on. But now, the implementation is here. So all the details about URL will go in the implementation. So maybe you have a, a remote event list, oh, not cache. Let's use the list loader. List loader. I will implement the loader. And this one requires a URL. Right, it requires like as a dependency. You know, here. Like we'll conform 
to that protocol, but it's outside the module. It's infrastructure details. It doesn't need to be in the main module because maybe application two doesn't want to use the same remote list. It can use a different one. So you can separate the infrastructure implementation details. That's another solution. You separate the infrastructure details from the core module, the feature module. So can you find this as more as the domain, like the, the core models and services that this application needs to function decouple from in infrastructure details. The actual implementations can go into a different module and you can have multiple implementations of that infrastructure for different applications. Let's say application one wants this infrastructure for this remote list one that requires a URL, but maybe application two will provide a hard coded one with a list of predefined events that you can select. You have this more, it's more flexible. Okay, this makes sense. Okay, so here the infrastructure modu module will be uh, implemented by the um, the feature module, which is event listing, right? It's going to implement event listing loader. Yeah, so those are just protocols or any kind of abstraction here that will be implemented by another module. So the infrastructure here can be a module that implements the dependencies that the feature needs. If you want to hide the infrastructure details from your modules, if you want to allow different infrastructure implementations, for example, this is usually more important for the caching side because you can provide a core data implementation or a file system implementation or an in-memory implementation of a cache. And those infrastructure details that can be defined in other modules. So application two can have an, just an in-memory cache, but application one can have a core data implementation of the cache that will persist across application runs. Okay, so I also need infrastructure module for event by? Event type. Event, event type, uh, sorry. Yeah, if you want to keep the details decoupled. And the good thing now is that you can use the same, let's say you have a cache here, like a or data or data repository that implements so both. just for caching uh, event listing, right? You can either say this one can only cache event list and say this is only going to implement this protocol, but since they share like the types and maybe you want to compose them in the same database schema, you can implement both. You can also implement this cache here. And because they share the same name, event type has a name and you have a name here, you can compose them in the schema. And when you save them to the file system there or in core data, you can save this event list for their event type with that name. So you can have one schema shared in the infrastructure for the caching, even though those two features are decoupled because that's an infrastructure detail. Or you can say, I only want to cache types, but not lists. That's fine as well. You can do it. Or you say application one wants to cache, wants to use an in-memory cache. No problem. We can create another infrastructure for in-memory We implement it. It can either be inside the application module or it can be in a separate module as well. Okay. So it's the same feature with different infrastructure for different applications. Or you can even say, oh, if you are a paying customer, you are a premium customer, we give you uh, core data caching or like a, this persistent caching. But if you're not a paying customer, you have only in-memory caching. So if you close the app, you lose everything. You need internet connection to use it. But if you are a paying customer, you have this feature where you get the offline caching. Right, so it opens up possibilities. Okay. This makes sense. But this is driven by requirements. If you have this requirement of separating the infrastructure, that's fine. Otherwise, you can say, no, this event listing is specific for this backend. So I don't mind having my API implementation inside this event listing. But then you need to know that 
if you then you want to use the same module with a different backend, you have to we have more work <laughs> because then we have to find a way to decouple it. Yeah, that's right. It's all driven by the requirements. There is no perfect solution that we work all the time, unfortunately. <laughs>